Fanboy. <laughs> Fanboy. Uh, Way hurt. across town, the phone rings off the wall. If you know he ain't home, why do you keep calling? So I'm sitting in my house in Paris, Tennessee, circa 1984. You come on singing those lines on what I think is the greatest songwriter show ever done. It was on PBS here in Nashville called Nashville Skyline. Ah, uh, yes, that was a great you, show. You were on an episode, I think, with Gary Nicholson and Kevin Welch, and you sang this song. And I literally said, I'm working for songwriters someday. I always loved the songwriters. I grew up with the songwriter, but you changed my life. So you get the credit and the blame. <laughs> and the blame. <laughs> and the blame. Well, you've been a great help to us, and so well, I'm glad you're here, man. But I just showed you a clip of that, because I literally have carried that VHS tape around for 35 years. <laughs> Last year, I bought a program, and I transcribed those things. And whoever out there, if you've got the masters to Nashville Skyline, that thing needs to get back on the air. But thank you. Thank you for for being the person that made me think about what my purpose in life was, John Scott Sherrill. John Scott Sherrill wrote Wild and Blue. And that's the story behind the song this week for the Tennessean and Tennessean.com. So thanks, man. Well, thank you, man. <laughs> and, uh, I'm so glad you liked it, and uh, I'm so glad you showed up, yeah, too. Well, when you, you, every songwriter should read those lyrics. You change the whole point of the song to the different characters in it. I mean, I just think it's an exercise in the genius of songwriting. So I have to ask you, kids these days with mobile phones, maybe they won't get it, but back when you had those landlines, I called her a million times. I knew damn good and well she wasn't at home because it was heartache. My heart was broken and I, and I knew she was probably, I knew she wasn't out thinking about me, you know? Yeah. Did this happen to you? Oh, yes. Tell me how this song got written. Uh, well, I was married to my first wife at the time, but it was, well, it wasn't the greatest relationship. Uh, well, it was probably my fault because I was, I was uh, seeing other women, you know? Well, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> and uh, that didn't go over very well at home. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, uh, there was this one gal who uh, I was deeply in love with her, but you know she uh, she fancied some somebody else, and uh, so everything in that song is, wow. is true. You know, I knew it was, and we've never spoken about this part of it. I knew it was because it's so great, it's so personal, it's so real. Um, tell me about the day you wrote it, and you wrote it by yourself. Yeah, boy. You remember it? <laughs> I think it took me a couple of weeks to write that yeah. song. I think I had a, I might have had the chorus in the first day, but and then it took me, I think, a couple of weeks to to really hash out the verses. Mm -hmm. You know, but it per, you know it came pretty quick. Some songs take a long time to write, but that one was was pretty quick. A couple of weeks, I think. Well, I think when you live it, you know it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, did you know you had something special? Or were you too close to it, maybe? Well, I remember playing it for the, for some friends and for the guys in the band, the Wolves in Cheap Clothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had a band called the Wolves in Cheap Clothing, and uh, we'd do our shopping at Goodwill. <laughs> and, uh, it, was a, you know, it was a good look and uh, a great band. And I was, you know, when I'd write a new song, I'd play it for them, and and their reaction was was always a big deal to me. And uh, that was one song that they just flipped out over. Got so it. I kind of knew I had something there, because you know, they liked it. So John Anderson records this song. I've heard you do this song. I love your version of this song. I, I just don't think the feeling when you do this song, I have never been moved more by a song to this day. We just watched this clip on Nashville Skyline. We watched before you came over here and we're all like, I, I'm not sure that some of the staff over here had ever heard it. And they're all like, way across town, the phone rings off the wall if you know he ain't home. And everybody's lived that. So, um, he copied your version of it, at least what I've heard. Did you sing the demo? 
Yes. Because he stayed pretty true to it, man. I, I, as far as I can remember. Especially vocally. The band, they came in with the fiddles and stuff. But I mean, you could hear John doing it and, it, and transpose it over yours, and it's almost the same breath. Yeah. They, I was trying to remember exactly how it worked out. Uh, John had a sister named Donna Anderson, and she was a big Wolves and Cheap Clothing fan. Okay. And uh, she really picked up on that song and said, I got to play that for John. And, and come to think of it, I'm going to bring him, when you play your next gig, I'll bring him and he can see you do live. And that's that's how we first heard it. Really? Yeah. Man, that's quite a pitch. Because then he must have felt the emotion too. Um, a lot of other people recorded this song through the years. And it even became the title of three or four different albums. Yeah, that's right. It had a life of its own. I think own, Lucinda but... did it and maybe titled an album after it. I know that John certainly called the album Wild and Blue. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been a special song for me, and uh, I love John's version, you know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, what do people tell you, even to this day when you play that song? I, I mean, I've seen you at the Bluebird, other places do it, and I just see people like, man, I want to tell him how that related to me. You've had to have heard that over and over and over. It's, it's personal to everybody. Yeah. And isn't that the genius of a great, great timeless song? Well, I hope so, man, because uh, what are we gonna do now if we have cell phones? Mm -hmm. What are we gonna write about? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think we can figure that out, I'm sure. <laughs> but, but what do people tell you when they hear the song? Well, just like you said, they, the most common thing I hear is that, uh, well, that happened to me, man. Yeah. Yeah. That same thing happened to me. And uh, so then you, you're onto something there. <laughs> you're hearing the song and the video of your personal experience in that, in that place in your life. Heartbreak just, it plays. It plays like a movie, man. So you've got a new record, man. Tell me about it. I've got a new record, man. And uh, there it is. And that, this is the first thing I've made since uh, my band uh, Billy Hill put out the Billy Hill album. Yep. And uh, so it's been a few years. It's been a few <laughs> yeah. years. And but this is a solo project, and I'm really excited about it. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Did you write all the songs? I know you did. But yeah. I mean, yeah. what? You know, in an essence, what's the emotion? What's the message of this record? What did you want to say, and what did you say? Well, I wanted to say uh, country music is not only alive and well, it's just kicking. <laughs> I know it is if you're <laughs> playing my brother. So we look forward to it. We can get it, I'm sure, everywhere. But you have a website? Uh, yes. And it is? JohnScottSherald.com. What did I not ask you about this song? There have, it's had such a life for such a long time. There had to be stories or moments or something you recall about the writing or the recording. Yeah, I wasn't there for John's recording of it, but I just heard the record, and that <laughs> kind of blew my mind because I'd never heard anything. Well, the fiddle on there and the yeah. uh, whole raw mm -hmm. attitude. Yeah, I, I think I was transported back into country music back in the 50s yeah. or something. Well, I never asked John, but I kind of feel like he must have either been going through something like that himself or just had because he just... He channels what you wrote, John Scott. <laughs> he sure did. Well, yeah, he lived I, it. I want to thank you for it. It's just a timeless song. It certainly changed my career direction in my life. And isn't that what a song is supposed to do? Make us feel something. And you certainly did. And to this day, it remains one of my favorite, favorite songs of all time. <laughs> one of the you. greatest lyrics ever written. And so let's hear it because there's no substitute for his version of it. <laughs> the story behind the song this week for the Tennessean and Tennessean.com, one of the greatest that ever sat behind a guitar, John Scott Sherrill, Wild and Blue. Well, Just 
take you up yonder, honey. You're already wild and Somebody's room on the far side of town With your minds all made up And the shades all pulled down Someone is trying to satisfy you You don't know you wild and blue Wild and blue And it's no wonder Look at the things that you do They could just take you up yonder, honey Y'all When it's four in the morning and you're all alone with no place to go, why don't you come home, honey? I'll be right here, baby, waiting for you. I know you've been wild and good, wild and good, and it's no wonder. Look at the things that you do. They could just take you.